Hello and welcome to another video in my series on basic accounting. Now just a reminder that these videos are meant for individuals that are somewhat new to accounting. So maybe a high school student, an undergraduate student, or more likely just someone out in the general population that would like to know a little bit more about basic accounting principles. So if you are working on your MBA somewhere, these videos are probably below what you would need. However, if you just want to know the basics of accounting, then these videos are probably for you. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into our topic for this video. Now this video is the fourth in a series that talks about the four financial statements that accountants produce. And in this video, we'll be talking about the cash flow statement. So just what is the cash flow statement? Well, you can kind of think of it as the wallet of the business. So if you open up your wallet and hopefully there's a little bit of money in there, uh, of course, like my wallet is empty, but maybe you have some cash in there. That's kind of like what the cash flow statement does. It keeps track of the cash that goes in and out of the wallet. The cash flow statement covers a period of time versus a snapshot. So the balance sheet is a snapshot in time. And the cash flow statement, the income statement, and the retained earning statement all cover a period of time, most commonly a quarter or year. Now, what it does, is it accounts for, quote, cash transactions that come from the operating activities of the business, the financing activities of the business, and the investing activities of the business. Now, a couple of things here. I put cash in quotes because we're not talking about a couple of business persons exchanging suitcases of $100 bills. We're not talking about pure cash necessarily. That should be fairly obvious, but I just want to mention that. Now, every cash transaction has to do with one of the three primary business activities, operations, financing, and investing. And one of the important things about the cash flow statement is that it categorizes all the cash transactions into those three activities. Now remember that cash is a liquid asset. And no, we don't mean it's wet. What we mean is that it can be exchanged easily. Think about the difference between having you know, cash in your wallet versus something at your house you could go sell at a pawn shop, maybe, for $20. Which one's easier to work with? Well, the cash that's already in your wallet. So cash is a liquid asset, meaning it can be exchanged easily. Now, if you remember from my previous video, cash is an asset on the balance sheet. So if at the end of a year or a quarter, we have positive you know, net cash flows, then that gets added to our balance sheet as an asset. Now, many investors, when they're looking to invest in a business, will kind of skip everything else and go right to the cash flow statement. And that's because they want to know, is this business generating enough cash to meet its regular obligations? Now, the term liquidity, which has to do with cash being a liquid asset, liquidity is a term used to denote whether or not a business is generating actual cash from its assets, or at the very least, is able to convert its assets into cash quickly. So a business may have lots of factories and plants that are producing product and that product is you know, shipped to businesses or distributors and they're billed for those products. But what if the customer never pays? Well, they're not generating any cash. There's no cash coming into the business. So can a company use its assets to produce a cash flow? Now cash flow is not profit. That is something completely different. Okay, and that has to do with our net income. Now, there are businesses that are profitable, but may not have adequate cash flow. And likewise, there may be businesses that have cash flow, but are not profitable. So those two things are not synonymous. You got to keep them separate, sort of in your mind. So what is the basic cash flow equation? And I don't want to make this any more complicated than we have to, because it's not. But think about it this way. At some period in time, maybe like January 1st, a business has a cash position, has a certain amount of cash assets on its books. Now, over the course of the year, hopefully, they have 
cash coming in and less cash going out. So you can see the graphic over here on the right. They have cash inflow. In this example, it's revenue from sales. And if the outflow at the bottom is less than the inflow at the top, then the cash in hand goes up. So this is basically just like operating your checkbook. So you have a balance at the end of every month that you reconcile. And then over the course of the month, you have cash inflows as far as maybe your paycheck or salary. You have some cash outflows in terms of you know, paying your bills or rent or mortgage, whatever that might be. And hopefully at the end of the month, you have taken in more cash than you've had to pay out. So that's all cash flow really is, folks. It's not anything more complicated than that. So as always, I like to use concrete, practical examples that you may experience in your everyday life to make these concepts easier to understand. So let's look at number one. And actually, these are modified from my previous video on the balance sheet. I've just sort of tweaked them to work in our cash flow statement. So number one, let's say you borrow $100 from a friend or family member for a cash inflow. So if you borrow money, you get some cash in, and then when you have to pay them back, you have cash out. It's just that simple. Now this has nothing to do with the balance sheet. So if you take out a loan, yeah, you get the cash asset, but it's also matched with a liability. In this case, we're just worried about the actual flow of cash. So $100 to you, and then $100 back out when you pay it back. Number two, let's say you buy a $20,000 car and you use $5,000 of your own money as a down payment. So of course, you have a cash outflow of $5,000 for that down payment. And of course, after that, you're gonna have more cash outflows for car payments, gas, maintenance, and things like that. Number three, you take $1,000 cash and buy 100 shares of Bank of America stock at around $10. So you actually have a cash outflow of $1,000. Now, even though you get 100 shares of stock in return, for our example of cash flow, that doesn't matter. We're just worried about the $1,000 cash that leaves our bank account. Number four, you get a paycheck, cash inflow. We all love that. And then you pay your cell phone bill and your cable bill and maybe your car payment, car insurance, stuff like that. And those are all cash outflows. And then lastly, let's say you sign up a customer for a new cable service or something, and then you send them a bill. Once you send them the bill, they legally owe you those funds. So you have an accounts receivable asset, which you could display on your balance sheet. But until you actually get the cash for that bill, you have no cash flow. So you cannot record that cash inflow until the customer actually pays the bill. So now you can see why companies, certain companies, have a large amount of assets, but that does not necessarily mean they can generate the cash inflow or adequate cash to meet their obligations. So let's take a look at a basic uh, cash flow statement. And then again, this is from the Hershey Company, which comes from a textbook I use in my work. And this is the statement of cash flows from Hershey Company that ended December 31st, 2006. Now, the first thing I want you to notice on this cash flow statement is that everything is broken down into the three fundamental business activities. So we have operations, we have investing, and then we have financing. So remember, that the operations part of the business is sort of the day-to-day -day things that it does. So it sells product, it manufactures product, and things like that. Now, investing is when a company uses assets like cash to maybe invest in equipment or invest in a new plant or invest in a new computer system, something like that. And then financing is how a business raises it, the money to operate. So it can take out loans from banks. It can retain the earnings it makes, at least full or in part, and stuff like that. So the cash flow is broken down into those three subcategories. So if we look at this cash flow statement, we see that the Hershey Company had a net cash flow from operations of $723 million. Now, that does not mean that they had $723 million in sales. It does not mean they had $723 million of net income. It doesn't mean any of those things. 
it just means that in terms of operations, 723 million more dollars came in than went out. That's it. That's all it means. Now let's look at investing. They have investments in property, plant, and equipment. And that's a cash outflow of $216 million. So maybe they set up a new plant somewhere or they upgraded some of their manufacturing equipment. So those are cash outlays for those items, property, plant, equipment, etc. Now, in terms of financing, we see that we have cash receipts from financing, including debt. Now, remember our $100 loan example from before. When you take out a loan, you have a nice big cash inflow. Okay, now eventually you have to pay that back, but we're not really concerned with that in terms of our cash flow. We're just concerned with the fact that when we take out a loan, we get a cash inflow of whatever amount. So in this case, cash receipts from financing, including debt, the Hershey company had $544 million of inflow. Now next in that list are dividends paid to stockholders. And this is important. Dividends are not an expense, okay? A dividend is just a cash payment to stockholders. It's just a redistribution of earnings. So don't think of dividends as a, an expense because it's not. It's just basically a cash payment to investors. And then apparently Hershey did some repurchase of its own stock. So it repurchased, it bought $622 million of its own stock. And then it had some more cash outflows of like debt repayment and things like that. So they probably had, most businesses do, have outstanding loans. That's how they operate. And they have to make payments on those loans just like everyone else. So over the course of this year, they paid out $164 million cash to service whatever debt they have. So when we add all this up, okay, or add and subtract all of this up, it comes out to a positive amount, a positive cash flow of $30 million. When the year started, they had $67 million on hand. So you can kind of think of it as, you know, they opened in their wallet on January 1st, they had $67 million. It's a big wallet. And then through the activities of the whole year, they added $30 million on top of that. So as of the end of the year in 2006, they had $97 million of cash, of cash assets. Now remember, I said that cash is different from net income. And actually, I want to show you that right now. So Hershey had $723 million in positive cash flow from their operations. Of course, they had some cash outflows and in investing and financing. And when all was said and done, they had a net increase of $30 million, added to $67 million they had. So they ended up with $97 million cash for the year. Now let's go back and look at their net income statement. Now here, they had $4.9 billion in sales. And of course, they had expenses that helped generate those sales. So once everything was accounted for, they had a net income of $559 million. $559 million. Now let's go back. Their net cash flow from operations was $723 million. Just from operations, the net cash coming in was more than their net income. So see what I mean? You have to differentiate between cash flow and things like net income and profit and stuff like that. They're not the same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue forward. Now again, this is tweaked from my last video about the balance sheet. But there's this idea of insolvency, and there isn't just one kind of insolvency. So if you recall, that balance sheet insolvency was when a business or a person has an asset, let's say in this case, like a house, that's worth less than the liability taken out to pay for it. So as of right now, here we are still in you know, early summer of 2012. We're still in a terrible economic climate. There are, there are a lot of people that are upside down, what's called upside down, in their home. They owe more on the house than the house is worth because the value of their house fell through the floor when the economy crashed. So that's balance sheet insolvency. Now there is a phenomena called cash flow insolvency. And that's when a business is not able to generate enough cash inflow into the business 
to meet the obligations that they have to take care of through their cash outflow. So if you remember our diagram from before with the little tank of water, the problem is in this case is that the drain at the bottom of the tank is much larger than the pipe coming into the top of the tank. So there just isn't enough cash coming in to feed what has to go out at the bottom. Now just a reminder that insolvency is not the same thing as bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is a legal term, whereas solvency is an accounting term. So you need to keep those two things separate in your mind as well. So let's review real quick and then we're done. So the cash flow statement is basically the checkbook of the business. There's an ongoing ledger of cash in and out, and it works basically the exact same way as your checkbook would. It covers a period of time. It's not a snapshot in time. It covers a period of time. It accounts for the cash transactions that occur from operations, financing, and investing. And remember, cash is a liquid asset, which means that it can be exchanged easily. Cash is an asset on the balance sheet. So when we're talking about cash flows, that's actually tied into the balance sheet on the asset side. And actually, my next video in accounting will be about integrated financial statements. And there, I'll actually show you a live working model of financial statements that are tied together through Excel formulas. So when we input certain transactions into the balance sheet, for example, it will actually change in real time certain items on the cash flow statement or the income statement or both. Many investors look at the cash flow statement because the cash is sort of the lifeblood of the business. And liquidity is a term used to denote whether or not a business is generating enough cash to meet its cash outflow obligations. And finally, cash flow is not profit. There are many cases of businesses that can generate cash, but don't make a profit. And there are examples of profitable businesses that don't generate a whole lot of cash flow. So those two things are separate ideas. Okay, and that is it for our review and lesson on cash flow statements. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.